Welcome back to PTV's Top 10. I'm Heather Downen. And I'm Clinton Yates. All right, we admit it, we've been slacking, but we're back. So here's a special catch-up version of the best videos of the past month edition of Top 10. Number 10, the sniffles heard round the world. When Hillary teared up in New Hampshire, supporters said she was showing humanity, critics said it showed fakery, and others just plain exhaustion. No matter, this was the most politically important misty-eyed moment ever. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. You know, some of us put ourselves out there and do this against some pretty difficult odds. But some of us are right and some of us are wrong. Some of us are ready and some of us are not. Some of us know what we will do on day one, and some of us haven't really thought that through enough. And number nine, the Miracle Cross. Usually, it's Italian grandmas who see miracle apparitions, but when it came to Mike Huckabee's Christmas video, it was mostly Huckabee opponents who saw religion. Like Hillary's tears, this one's a classic political Rorschach test. Are you about worn out of all the television commercials you've been seeing? Mostly about politics. I don't blame you. At this time of year, sometimes it's nice to pull aside from all of that and just remember that what really matters is the celebration of the birth of Christ. If Hillary's tears made her a good cop or a good crier, Bill's role seems to be bad cop. Here are his two most infamous moments from the past month or so. What is but happening? the voters are entitled to say they don't. We can't say we think those things matter, but we choose to go this way because we think there's an overpowering reason to make another choice. You know, and and things. we're prepared to roll the dice. Give me a break. This whole thing is the biggest fairy tale I've ever seen. Our principal opponent said that since 1992, the Republicans had had all the good ideas. I'm not making this up, folks. Actually, what's so funny about that is Bill Clinton says, I'm not making that up, but Bill Clinton was making that up. All right, at number seven, in the category of harshest and cheesiest attack ad, the winner is Tom Tancredo, which, mind you, sounds like an Italian Latin name. Number six. The debates have been a mixed bag, but here's one moment when Obama got the best of Hillary. With relatively little foreign policy experience of your own, how will you rely on so many Clinton advisors and still deliver the kind of break from the past that you're promising voters? Well, the, uh, you know, I am... I want to hear that. <laughs> well, Hillary, I'm looking forward to you advising me as well. <laughs> the, uh... At number five, and then there was the likable moment when Hillary got the best of Obama, when Barack looked like a little bit of a jerk. What can you say to the voters of New Hampshire who are hesitating on the likability issue. Well, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> I'm sorry, Senator. <laughs> but I'll try to go on. <laughs> I don't think I'm that bad. Um, uh, you're likable no. enough. Thank Hillary, you, sir. <laughs> Number four. Okay, here's a recent video. One that may have swung Michigan to Mitt. It's Democrats for Romney. Democrats vote Romney on the 15th. If you can't see yourself voting for Romney in 08, pick a different Romney. Think of Romney from 94. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose. Romney in 02. We do have tough gun laws in Massachusetts. I support them. But best of all, he's rich, desperate, and lashing out like a drunken frat boy. Not so much. But at number three, here's something that no doubt did help Obama. Perhaps the most famous endorsement tour ever. It's the Oprah and Obama show. We the people. We, the people, can see through all that rhetoric. We recognize that the amount of time you spent in Washington means nothing unless you're accountable for the judgments you made with the time you had. We need good judgment. We need Barack Obama. Number two, if Obama was feeling the love from Oprah, he wasn't feeling the love from Bill O. Here's Brave New Films video on the O'Reilly Factor versus the Obama campaign. Press Pit Smackdown slash Meltdown. 
No, you're not. You're blocking his shot. Get over there. I've never seen a member of the press put hands on a staff member before. That's really low class, pal. Really low class. But no one on this earth is going to block a shot on the O'Reilly factor. I actually spoke to Barack Obama. We had a nice little chat. Senator, we came all the way up to see you. Senator, a word. Let me shake your hand. Thank you. Good to see you. How you? We have a word. Look, I go. you're a good guy. I've got there's a whole bunch of people over there. I need to talk to them. And we'll leave you with number one. One day, it was the best campaign speech ever, but by New Hampshire, it seemed forgotten. So, for your viewing pleasure, here it is again. Highlights from Obama's Iowa victory speech. I'm Clinton Yates. I'm Heather Downen. We'll see you next time. Take it away, Barack. Thank you, Thank you Iowa. Yo, they said, they said, they said this day would never come. They said our sights were set too high. They said this country was too divided, too disillusioned to ever come together around a common purpose. But on this January night, at this defining moment in history, you have done what the cynic said we couldn't do. But sometimes, just sometimes, there are nights like this when the world sees America differently and America sees itself as a nation less divided and more united. You'll be able to look back with pride and say that this was the moment when it all began. This was the moment when the improbable beat what Washington always said was inevitable. This was the moment when we tore down barriers that have divided us for too long. When we rallied people of all parties and ages to a common cause. When we finally gave Americans who'd never participated in politics a reason to stand up and to do so. This was the moment when we finally beat back the politics of fear and doubt and cynicism, the politics where we tear each other down instead of lifting this country up. This was the moment, years from now, you'll look back and you'll say that this was the moment. This was the place where America remembered what it means to hope. For many months, we've been teased, even derided, for talking about hope. But we always knew that hope is not blind optimism. It's not ignoring the enormity of the task ahead or the roadblocks that stand in our path. It's not sitting on the sidelines or shirking from a fight. Hope is that thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and to work for it and to fight for it. Hope is what led a band of colonists to rise up against an empire, what led the greatest of generations to free a continent and heal a nation, what led young women and young men to sit at lunch counters and brave fire hoses and march through Selma and Montgomery for freedom's cause. Hope, hope is what led me here today. With a father from Kenya, a mother from Kansas, and a story that could only happen in the United States of America. Hope is the bedrock of this nation. The belief that our destiny will not be written for us, but by us, by all those men and women who are not content to settle for the world as it is, who have the courage to remake the world as it should be. That is what we started here in Iowa, and that is the message we can now carry to New Hampshire and beyond. The same message we had when we were up and when we were down. The one that can change this country brick by brick, block by block, callous hand by callous hand. That together, ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Because we are not a collection of red states and blue states 
We are the United States of America. And in this moment, in this election, we are ready to believe again. Thank you, Iowa.